Linda and welcome to Naturescape Studio. This is the second part of the three part videos that I am showing you on how to use the clay punch cutters. This second part is called the flip trick. So let's get started. Creating an inlay pattern in your clay is really a lot of fun. Uh, but it does take some pre-planning. And one of the ways that I do my planning is that I have my sketchbook where I have created uh, a pattern that I wanted to do. Now the clay punch cutters are kind of nice because you can stamp them into an um, ink pad and then stamp it on your paper in just the pattern that you want. And I started out with one swirl pattern and it kind of developed into that. And I even used some colors to give me an idea of what colors I wanted to use in this uh, pattern. From there I went ahead and I made myself, uh, I copied uh, this pattern and made myself a template uh, or a pattern sheet that I could follow in my clay. So let me show you uh, on a fresh piece of clay how we're going to get something similar to these patterns. While there are lots of ways to make an applique or an inlay pattern in polymer clay, uh, using the clay punch cutters has been one of my favorite ways to make an inlay. There are a couple of special tools though that are required to make the best of that technique. One is using a bud setter tool. This has uh, two needles on the end instead of just one for a regular needle tool. And the other is some kind of a burnisher, a flat surface burnisher that will help you burnish the whole square of your applique or inlay. And there's, there's a couple of different ones around available for you. This first test piece I did, um, I'm not really excited about the colors on it, um, but I tried this out to see how it would work and to match my um, concept on my that I had in my sketchbook. Uh, so in order to get that, I thought, well, I'm not going to use this, but I wanted to make use that as a cover for this metal tin. So I went ahead and made myself a template of the size of the metal tin, and then I created a Skinner blend in my colors that I wanted to and cut it out. So that's going to be my base right there um, for making that cover for that tin with this pattern on it. Well the first thing I'm going to need to do is this is my uh, going to be my base so I need to decide okay which way do I want it to be up down whatever I don't really think it matters to me too much but I took my um, piece that I copied and I can lay that then on here and what I'm going to do is try to get that kind of centered and you know I, I'm not too particular about having it perfectly centered in there but what I need to do is have that pattern transferred in some way so I'm just going to take the end of my tool here and go around and a pencil would work um, I don't like pens quite th that much for this kind of t thing um, but I think this will give me a, a good pattern. Let's hold it down and take a peek. Oh, there we go. All right. Now, by doing it that way, um, once I start making the, the uh, cuts in here and I get my inlays done, I can then smooth that, and that will all disappear, so I don't have to worry about having those lines in there. Now, what I've got, I prepared another piece um, of clay for the inlay, and instead of using different colors, I've got this... Um, Skinner blend in a copper that I just love. I think it's going to be gorgeous on there. Uh, but what I'm going to do is uh, start with, I'm, I'm going to see if I can do this so that you can see all of it as I'm going along. And I am going to take my clay punch cutters now and start cutting. Now, you can do these all at one time or you can do um, make your cuts all at one time or you can do them in sections and I prefer to do them in sections um, because if you can imagine this all filled with holes uh, you're going to end up with um, some distortion of the holes as you're punching the ones next to it. So I'm going to take my cutter and start right here in the center and punch out that hole. Now that's good I wanted that piece of clay to come out so I have my puncher here and I'm going to plunge that piece of clay off and set it aside. Now I want more than one of that particular 
size. So I'm going to do two. I think maybe I'll do three there. And that one came out. Now if you remember from the first demo, uh, when I used my cutter, I pressed it down and did a little bit of wiggling here. And that made that clay stick inside and cut it out. I'm not too concerned with the pouncing now, but I will be at some point. And I have my pouncer here off to the side so with my baking soda in the sock so that I can pounce my cutters. Let's put it on this side. And to keep as and use the powder as a release uh, for the clay. Now if you can see right here, there is a little bit of distortion because I put those pretty closely together. But I'm not going to be too concerned about that. I can even it out a little bit. Um, so it's not going to be too much of a problem. So that means that I want to start putting some colors into those holes and fill those up. Now I do want this to come out of the sheet of clay and stay in the cutter. And one reason is because then I can plunge this clay out and because this is really a small one the easiest way if I can get it in there is to just let it fall into that hole and release. That way um, I'm filled that hole with this color inlay. And I'll probably have all of those be quite the same. And this is such a small piece here, I'm not too concerned about marks on the inlay piece that I'm putting in. Okay, now a little bit of finger pushing here, that, you know, that kind of helps coax those in where I want them to be. Um, you can also use a, a clay shaper tool and that helps to kind of smooth those down and keep those in shape. Basically I want them to lock in there so that they become uh, part of the whole sheet. Now I'm going to go on to the next size in my clay punch cutters and start around this circle got my little wiggle. Now that one's stuck in there and that's okay because I can pop that right out just like that and put that aside. Now I'm going to do another one. Again that kind of stuck. I'm not too concerned because it's sometimes easier if it's in there, stuck in there than it is if it comes out. That one too. Okay, so I did in my main pattern, I think I put a few more of that size, probably about four or five. So let's keep going here with my holes. And you see I'm using the outline that I had as the baseline for, for placing these um, shapes. Let's do one more so we kind of make it around the curve there. There we go. Okay. Now part of this too, I if you see, I have lined my cutters up all in a line so that I have the shapes all in place right in order so that I don't have to get confused when I'm trying to go from one to the next. Okay, so here we are. Now, this time I do want the clay to release a little bit better out of the cutter. So I'm going to start moving down this sheet of color here. Uh, that one came out which is okay. So I have another cutter and these this particular square shape is designed so that the smallest one is going to push this out cleanly so that you don't have any lines or marks. But what I'm going to do, I could place it in here, oops, that didn't work, um, without doing anything to it. Um, but what I want to do is kind of place this upside down. 
or flip it in that so it's in that hole. Let's try this again. And I'm pouncing my clay and gonna, uh, that one came out too. Okay, so I need to extrude that or, or expel that from the end of the cutter. I'm going to hold my finger there so I can get it, grab it with the bud setting tool and then flip it. This is the top side that came out of the cutter that way and I'm flipping it over. And the reason I'm doing that is that on the bottom side the cutter has left this a little bit smaller. If you've used big cutters and you see that when you cut down the top side kind of folds in on itself but the bottom side stays a little bit flanged out and I want that little flanged out side because when I place it into the hole come on I want that flange side to fill that hole better and it'll be a lot smoother on top and I'm gonna do a little bit of rain you can see because I play cut these all whoops get the right cutter here I cut these all uh, at the same time they kind of mushed up between each other okay to make sure I have the right cutter in my hand I didn't have it to begin with flip it over and set it in the hole Again, you know, a clay shaper tool kind of helps to get that set in there. You know what? I did get the wrong size one in there. Let's get this one out. Now, I haven't really sealed that down yet, so it's easier to take out. I'm going to go ahead. Oops. Sometimes your fingers don't do what they, you want them to. Okay. Let's get another one in there. Okay. Now I don't know if I can hold this so that you can see how this flange is. So if you can see here, it's a little bit wider at the bottom than it is at the top. And that's why I flip it over instead of placing it top down. And another reason I like these is because with a double-ended tool, when you pick it up, it doesn't slide around on the end of a needle tool. There we go. Okay, so we got that. Let's do now. I started with that one. Let's keep going a little bit more and make a few more holes around here.
pretty done. Kind of has a little funky roundness to it, but you know, that's that's okay. Now I'm going to kind of clean off some of this. But what I'm going to do next is take a square piece of deli sheet in there. Um, most of these little del deli patty papers have a little waxier side than the other, and I'll put it down on here and kind of rub it all over with my fingers. Now what you can see and how we're going to really get this to um, lock in and have, because right now there's kind of little holes and edges around all of these that I want to get rid of. So we're going to take this and we're going to start locking it in. Now I've got a large flat surface here. And this is a fabulous tool that I picked up. I don't make it, but we can tell you where you can get one and if you press down and smooth run this around you will see that where there had been white edges around all this they're now starting to turn fill with color and that's because we're making the whole surface into one flat sheet and all of the marks and all of the stray holes and that are kind of going together. Now I see there's a few more places where that's a little bit whiter around there than I want. So I've got this other burnisher that uh, you can tell it's been highly used that I'm going to go around here and I don't want to press down too hard because that will leave a big divot in, in the surface. And when, if I go to um, want to polish this, burnish it, sand it and burnish it to a high shine, then those divots are going to make it a problem to do that. Now here's the big reveal. I could do a little bit more. I think some of those those are kind of sticking out a little more. So what I'll do is I'll go back with this tool, give it a little bit more. English so they call sometimes which just means pressing a little bit harder when I'm doing this it doesn't take a whole lot of pressure ah there we go there's what I like to see one clean integrated surface so it's all and I think that came out really nice I like how the shimmer is from the pearl clay and all of the dots and the scrapes and my fingernails that were in there are gone. Now I'm going to show you because I worked on this nonstick surface so I could pick it up uh, and pull this off without distorting my shape at all. But even if I was to use the back side, it's all nice and sealed too. So by using that flip over we've got a nice surface here. Okay, that's step one on the flip trick.